Hey guys, Shift 838 here. I wanted to show a quick video on how I'm using the Grease Weasel to read and write real TI-94A diskettes and be able to write them from disk images. So let's go ahead and get to it. Uh, there is a couple of pieces of software you need, like the Grease Weasel. I'm using 1.14 of the software, and I have the Grease Weasel version 4 hardware. I actually have a PC 3.5 drive hooked up to it with a straight through cable, so it actually acts as drive 1 or drive B. Starts counting at drive 0. So let's go ahead and get into it. Another piece of software you'll need is the HXC floppy emulator software. I'll put links to these software and the wiki pages and all that stuff inside the description of the video, so you can just copy paste. So let's go ahead. The first thing we're going to do is actually read one. So this is the directory that I have it set into right here. This is actually in my documents directory. You see there's nothing here right now. So the first, first thing we're going to do is read it. And I'll go through the command and tell you what everything is. So let's go ahead. So this is the read command. So the read command that you're actually looking at right here. So the GW, let me get over there. This is the actual executable for the Grease Weasel software that you're going to have to download. The read command tells it to read. Of course, what you see here in quotes is the full qualified file name with the directory it's going, it's going into and the file name it's going to create. So we're going to create tfp.hfd. Now, since it's an HFE file, which is a raw data image, you need the bitrate. So colon, colon, bitrate equal 250. What this bitrate does is that it's good for everything from single-sided single density all the way through double-sided double density disk drives. So we want to leave that there. The tracks command, of course, is exactly what it says. It's tracks. We have 40 tracks on the, on the TI, typically, for the most part. But the variable is C for cylinders. 0 to 39. Again, we can start counting at 0. Next thing is dash drive. This tells us what drive it's going that that is actually numbered that the disk is in. This is drive 1, which is really drive B for the PC, or even drive 2 for sugar. So it's really what it is, since it starts counting at 0. It doesn't take too long to do this. A um, minute, maybe a minute and 15 seconds, maybe. So let's go ahead and execute it so it can read. And the actual game I have in here is my new adventure game, which is Infocom type, called The Forgotten Pyramid. And it's on a double sided single density disk drive or diskette. Or it might be double sided double density. I have to double check. But either way, it's, it knows it's going to read both heads. If you wanted to read, let me go ahead and just say that. If you want to read, say, a single uh, head system, so a single sided drop, diskette, you would actually put a colon here, a head, H for head equal zero. It tells you it's only going to read side one. That's it. With nothing there, it reads both sides. So let's go ahead and execute that. And as you see, it tells you track zero, head zero, track zero, head one, and so on. Now, once this is done, I'll show you how to convert this over to a actual .dsk file to be used with like Classic 99 or MAME or, or other uh, emulators for the TI. And, of course, this will also work for the Geneve, for a Geneve disk. I'll give it a, probably about another 30 seconds, and it will probably be done. Now, with the HFE format reading, you know, it's just reading it directly into a file. When we come to writing, you'll notice that it won't go through and verify sectors that it's written, because with the HFE format, it's just raw data. It's not going to verify at all. 
Um, I have made some feature requests to the developers. And I don't know if they'll actually be addressed or not, but I've, I've put them in. So as you see, it has created that file right here. We're going to go ahead and load this file up in the HXC floppy emulator software. So once it's loaded, now it's in, in the emulator software's buffer. We're going to export it. And we're going to export it as a TI-994A V9 T9 disk file. This makes it a disk image that can be used with your favorite emulator. Go ahead and hit save. And there it is right there. So now I'm going to launch Classic 99. Hopefully uh, everyone's familiar with this. It's a really, really good program. I already have the just the standard Extended Basic. You can use any flavor Extended Basic you want. I just chose this one. Um, then we're going to go ahead and mount the disk image file. Change it to image. Here's the one that we just created. And now we're going to load up. Now on my video options, see I have the F18A selected. Even though it says incomplete, it works just fine for this. Um, that way I can select AD column. So extended basic. You're going to see a little menu come up for my game for the Forgotten Pyramid. Select 40 column, 80 column, 9938 or 58, or the F18A. And of course, I'm going to do the F18A. F18A and it's loaded. So it's already loaded the first disk. Now it has to go and load the, the bigger file. And there we go. And this is exactly how you would do it with any disk. It all works just fine. So now I'm going to show you how to rewrite a disk, right? So let's go ahead and exit out of there. So to write, so say you have a, a disk image, right? So you've created it here, but now you want to write a different disk image to another disk image. So first thing you actually have to do, we're going to go into my disk area, the classic 99, just go to the, my adventures for the adventure module for the TI, right? So as you see, this is a 90k floppy. So that's a single, single sided floppy, right? We're going to go ahead and open it. We're going to export it to HFE format right there. So that's export, right? So now, if we want to take that and write that to an actual disk, I have write, nope, I don't have write there yet. So let me go grab my command. So I don't have to type a majority of it. I guess I do have to type it since I didn't actually copy it. For some reason, I thought I did. So we're going to do a GW write, right? Now we need the full path of the file, right? So I'm going to go get it. You're not seeing this because I'm on another screen. pull it up right here so you can see it. So I've copied it. Put it there, right? Now there should be an HFE here. There it is right. Might be 
underscore dsk dot hn if you want to. So once we do that, now we're going to tell it for the tracks. Tracks equal C from 0 to 39. Since this is a single sided, we're going to say colon h equals zero float drive equal one. Now, this, if I'm remembering correctly, it will start the write to my actual three and a half inch disk of this actual HFE disk image. I am double checking it before I press enter. Center. There it goes. So now it's writing. And like I said, since it's HFE, it's not verifying the track. Otherwise, you would see verifying. But since it's HFE, it's not going to do a verify. Now, if you have a bad track and it can't write to it, you'll see an error. Now it's completely written. So now what you can do is actually take that diskette out and take it over to your TI, throw it in the drive. And load and access that diskette. It's that simple. So it doesn't take a lot of time, as you can see. I hope this was helpful. And thanks for watching.